So let's say we've found local maxima in the accumulator array that are greater than the threshold. So we have this uh, array called A peaks, which contains ones that are um, the peaks that we're looking for. So we want to find those coordinates, and we can use MATLAB's find function again. Unfortunately, we just can't use um, find on the array and get back the uh, coordinates in terms of in this case are three sets row column and the depth coordinate <coughs> for some reason they implemented this only to find <coughs> coordinates of two-dimensional and one-dimensional arrays however we can still do it because we can always treat a multi-dimensional array as a one-dimensional array and this is actually how they're stored in a computer. So you can think of a two-dimensional array basically as a set of rows like this. Inside the computer, they're just stacked up in order like that. So uh, in the case of a three-dimensional, of course, we would have um, these rows stacked up for the first slice and then for the second slice and the third slice. But the point is that um, the values have a one-dimensional index um, you know, when, when you think of the array as being stored like this. So find, if you pass in a uh, multi-dimensional array, it will just return these one-dimensional indices like this. You can still get back to the equivalent subscripts or indices of the 3D array using this um, into sub function, indices to subscripts function. Um, you pass in the size which returns the uh, number of rows, columns, and depth. And you pass in the indices that you want to convert, and then it will return the equivalent row, column, and depth indices. So this is uh, the code that does that. Here is the dilation uh, test to see if it's greater than the threshold. Here's where it finds the one-dimensional indices, converts it to two-dimensional indices, or I'm sorry, three-dimensional indices, and then draws the param parabolas on the image. And it does that just by um, you know, going through the equation of parab parabola and computing x and y. So let me paste this code into the program after the part we already have. and run that. Okay, so this is uh, the part we had before, namely we got our original image, edge image, a slice of the parameter array, and then these are the uh, parabolas that were found. So in this case it found one, two, three, four of them it looks like. By adjusting the threshold you can find uh, more or fewer of these parabolas. Uh, just a couple other notes on the Huff transform. Um, you can make it more efficient by using the gradient direction. So right now, up to now, we've just used the location of an edge point, but um, most edge operators will return a uh, direction as well. So if you use the gradient direction, that uh, is essentially the uh, same direction as this perpendicular vector. So basically that determines this angle theta here. So in other words, we don't need to loop over angles because we already know the angle given an edge point. So that saves one for loop, um, which greatly speeds things up. You know, it, it is possible though that the gradient angle is noisy, in which case um, your uh, your line angle would not be accurate. So uh, it might be better to increment multiple cells corresponding to several angles near that estimated angle. Um, the generalized Huff transform is a nice uh, extension to the line and curve finding. can find arbitrary shapes. We do some pre-processing. We take our shape and we represent it by a bunch of boundary points. And for each boundary point, we compute the distance and angle to the center of the shape. So all that is pre-processing. So for example, this shape here, we've got two points, this one and this one. They both have the same 
uh, angle, gradient angle. Um, so for that gradient angle, we note that the uh, vector to the object center is in this direction. It's R1 and R2. So we create a R table, namely for each possible gradient direction, we store the vectors uh, pointing to the object center. So in this case, we had these two points. They both uh, had the same gradient direction. So we, we list both vectors here, R1 and R2. So to find the shape then, um, we compute the gradient direction at each edge point. We look up the vectors from the R table. These point to the possible center. And then we increment the accumulator array at those points. Here's a synthetic example of a, here's our template object. So we construct our R table from that. Um, here's a test image containing a couple of those objects. And this is the accumulator array um, that specifies the object centers. So we just look for, for peaks in this and we could see there's two of them here. So in summary, edge points can be linked to form meaningful region boundaries. Lines and line segments can be fitted to edge points. If a connected series of edge points is available, for example, contours produced by the Laplacian of Gaussian or Canny edge detector, then you can recursively split the contour and fit line segments to each portion. If edge points are not necessarily connected, you can use the Huff transform method to find lines. The Huff transform can be applied to find any parametrized curve. It is robust to noise and missing points. Why is it desirable to parametrize lines using the form rho equals x cos theta plus y sine theta instead of y equal mx plus b?